we will all offer a prayer of meditation. Almighty Father, by the mystery of God, help us to realize Christ. By the mystery of Christ, help us to do four-step repentance so that our darkened hearts can be enlightened. Help us to realize all of the world correctly and to solve all problems. We believe that this time will be that blessed time. May we live within the blessings of doing more and more well and to pass them down to a thousand, ten thousand generations and to live as a patriot for our country and our people. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. So after praying so um, fervently, you know, as much as you love, you will receive, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. But the reason why it's not working out is every time you sin, who is tormented? So you know. Every time I sin, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 24, we torment God. So God is in control of all things, life and death. He gives money, takes it away. So if we're tormenting him, how can we do well? If you're double-minded, God knows. From before, in Korea, particularly in East Asia, China, Japan, you know, they talk a lot about an obedient child. You know, they talk so much about obedient children, these filial children, that there's, there's a character in Chinese. And in Korea, they would give an award for a filial child. But it's all lies because there's no way to become a, a filial child. So the one who's received the award, the one who's given the award, it's all lies because there's no way to become an obedient child. Which religion? you know, tells you how to become an obedient child. You say that you repent a lot. Yes, the sins of the heart and the hating to keep God in your heart, the flesh. But even more than this, how you weren't a dutiful child to your parents. Put your hand up if you're confident that you were an obedient child to your parents. According to the Bible, it's all lies. So if you're not obedient, what happens? In the past, you know, if you studied 10 years, that was really, it was really a lot. But these days, just elementary school, you know, um, getting a bit of tutoring, that's 10 years, but it's it's useless. It's, it's nothing. In America, there was a child who is in kindergarten and already they're doing experiments with water. So I looked in their diary. I, I'm not good at English, but when I read it, it said today, you know, we we were dividing up H2O. This is a kindergarten student. That was my grandchild. So in the past, what you learned in middle school, you're now learning in elementary school. What you're learning in high school, you're learning in elementary school. But it's all it's all useless because what you learn there, you're not going to get employed with that. So they talk a lot about a dutiful child, but there's no way. This is what we have to repent of. We have to be forgiven how we weren't filial children. And that's how your children become obedient. Even though people are so educated if you, you know where is there a person who is a man you know i hear these elderly people talking these young people come and they're like give me a cigarette and if they say you know i don't have one then you know these elderly people are saying before we throw the stone and criticize those people, how how was I to my parents? If you have sinned, does God help you or not? Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. Whether it be sins of the past or, you know, if you have sin, 
you can't receive help. You want to receive help from God, but it's because of sin that we cannot receive. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13, if you scorn God's word, you will be ruined. If you scorn the word that he helps you at dawn, and you expect to receive blessings, you expect your business to do well, you expect your children to do well, you expect blessings in your late age, how can you have such thoughts? As long as you have thought your thoughts, you haven't received baptism. If you haven't received baptism, then you're a demon. So what, what are these demons going to do? These thoughts mean that you haven't received baptism. Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. Even though you're given this word, you don't you don't understand. So your parents did they do four step repentance well, so that you became an obedient child? What kind of lie is that? Our parents they didn't even know four step repentance properly. Even though we say we're doing four step repentance, so if your parents don't do four step repentance, that's a sin of rebellion. So the children are all disobedient. So, you know, how can that be good family? And you marry into that and you say you're not doing well. If you have the sin of rebellion, already your children are disobedient, you can't do well. Let's find, uh, let's find Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18. So it's not the children who are the problem. I have to repent of how I was a disobedient child under parents. So you leave those sins remaining and you, you pray about other things. This is why you're not doing well. You say that your children's exams have finished. Until, until our life ends, until God calls us, we continue to have tests. What, you think just because the exams are over, it's over? Someone who's unfortunate, even though they have the highest marks, they can't, they can't, they can't get in to something because they they don't have you know they're missing one mark but people who who God is with even though they don't have the marks they still get in just because you have a good score what's what's right about that everything you do with your head it's all evil and so it, just because you study well with your head even in the world they say that those people are so um they're so arrogant. You see if anything that they do, if they do it properly. Those people who are smart, you see if, they're, if their business or their work, they're, they're, they change. They're so changeable. You know, these days, if, even if you set up a business, just spending the money on the interior decoration, you, you know, a rock, if it doesn't keep moving, that's when the moss and the, the seaweed stick to it. So when you repent, you have to be like a rock and you have to keep rolling so that so that the moss doesn't, uh, moss doesn't stick to you. But when you receive blessings, you have to be patient. You have to, sta you have to stay still like a rock. So without, so without forced at repentance, you cannot receive blessings. By forced at repentance, you become like a rolling rock, so you don't receive those that moss. But by forced at repentance, you become a rock, and you stand still, and you wait for the blessings. So let's read Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father or his mother, and when they chastise him, he will not even listen to them. Amen. So here it says, if a man has a stubborn and rebellious son, it doesn't say it's the parents. If you want to see if that family does well, you look at the children. If you want to see the country's future, you look at the young people. So what, what am I like? What's my family like? What's my country like? They say, there's a lot of nasty people in America. Yes, there are. When I, but I went for lunch at a revival and there were bullets flying around. I People were just all getting down. I went down too, behind a car. You know, I came out after eating lunch and there were these bullets flying past and someone died and was dragged off. And But at the same time, if you get into an elevator, 
if they see someone who's elderly, they are so, they have, their manners are so much better than in Korea. You know, we look at the outside and we say Korea's, I mean, America's corrupt. You know, to a dog, they only see poo. A man is someone who sees good things. If we see bad things, we repent it as my sin and change it to good. That's only in the Bible. In the world, they can only see good as good and bad as bad. But Philippians chapter 2 verse 4, bad things, we repent of it as my sin and change it to good. Good things. And so a man, they do more and more well. So my family's problems, my problems, the country's problems, the world's problems. Here it says, if a man has a son, what kind of son? Stubborn. So this is the sins of their own, these are their own sins, the sins of the heart and the flesh and hating to keep God. But rebellious, this is the ancestors' sins of betraying the gospel. So we say God's words. The fakes, they pretend to say God's words, but they make it so it doesn't work. So how is this word interpreted? It's by the mystery of God, forced at repentance. So Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, a gospel without Christ, it ruins your soul. It's a fake sermon. That's what God has decided upon. So what is evangelism, mission work? It's to speak the mystery of Christ, Colossians chapter 4, verse 3. But the fake churches, they don't do this. They don't do what God says. That's why they're fake. So what are you like? So where does this sin of rebellion come from? If you have this rebellion, this sin of rebellion, do the children listen to the parents or not? So you look at, you look at all of the world, these young people, these children, they don't listen to their parents. They say this is a problem. They all say this. And then underneath here, it's scary. It says, go out and stone them to death. Even though they're your children, the sin of rebellion, the, the sin that the parents have committed of rebellion, it's the children who have to be stoned to death because they're not a man. What's our society like? You know, before you look at others, what about me? How, how, what was I like to my parents? What, your parents didn't, force, didn't do forced debt repentance and you don't have the sin of rebellion? If you have the sin of rebellion, you were completely disobedient to your parents. You were never obedient. So whenever you repented of this, not only don't you repent of this, so you look at our church, these 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 beasts who learn with their IQ, who are educated, you know, their children, they're crazy. They, they bring them here to be healed. Are they healed? They just want to use God. They come here for a little time, then they depart. These are the educated people, these evil people. So what you learn with your head is the worst of evil. James chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. It has demons. It is so evil. That's what God has pointed out. And even though it's their children who are crazy, who are disabled, who have problems, and so they're disobedient to the point where you have to stone them. But these learned people, they're the ones that don't do it even more, who betray. So the, the children, they don't listen to their parents, their mother or the father. Why is it that your children don't listen? Because you have passed down this sin of betraying Christ, the sin of rebellion. That's why your children don't listen. It's not what others have done. Let's read it again. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father or his mother, and when they chastise him, he will not even listen to them. Amen. So to read after that, it's scary because it says you take them out and you stone them to death. So it's not the children who are evil. It's because I've committed the sin of rebellion where I've betrayed Christ. Let's, let's find Ezekiel chapter 2. So it's because the parents don't do forced at repentance. That's why the children are so rebellious. They're the worst of evil. 
And so they think, oh, you just have a little amount of children. Whether you don't have children or not, you still have that sin. Even if you have one child, you still have that sin. So you think, oh, I'm not going to have ten, I'll just have one. You think that they're going to become a, a, a man? The sin of rebellion goes down. What is that sin of rebellion? Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3, 4, and 5. Ezekiel chapter 2. Let's read it. Then he said to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the sons of Israel, to a rebellious people who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. I am sending you to them who are stubborn and obstinate children, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, whether they listen or not, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. Amen. Mission work, evangelism, is to only speak the mystery of Christ. Colossians chapter 4 verse 3. So evangelism, mission work, is to speak the mystery of Christ. But there are people who don't listen. That's because from their ancestors, the sin of rebellion has come down. I'll read verse 5. For they are a rebellious house. So the ancestors have hindered the gospel. They're filthy demons. No matter how much you speak to them, they will not listen. So those who don't hear the mystery of Christ, do you think it's a good thing? It means that from your ancestors, you're a filthy house. They're people who need to be stoned to death. So it's those people that don't listen because they're rebellious. They will not listen. That's what God has re- recorded. This is the word of truth. So you say, oh, my children don't listen to forced at repentance. It's because from your ancestors, you're a filthy household that deserves to be stoned to death. How can you brazenly go around saying you're a man? You know, people, there are people who hide their faces because of a small amount, but these people who come out who are brazen. So why is it that your heart is so hardened? It's because of you're so stubborn and obstinate because of sin. So God says, I send you to them. So in our past, we, we were so... shameless to our parents. Why? Because of our ancestors' sin of rebellion. How many of your ancestors did forced out repentance? Without me realizing, we were, we were covered with this sin of rebellion. So look back and see if you were obedient to your parents. How much were you obedient to your parents? So you think God's going to look at that and just leave that alone? That sin of rebellion Your ancestors, because they didn't live a, live a life of, pro- of faith properly, they went to a church without Christ or they believed in demons. So the European ch- church, even though they believed for 2,000 years after Jesus, those churches are empty. If you go on tour, you know, people who are drunk, people who, you know, are smoking, they go into these churches and after they come out, you know what they do? They curse God. So even our country, the numbers are decreasing. Why? It's because of the sin of rebellion, the sin of betrayal. There are a lot of people here who have tried to be obedient. Even after the parents uh, have passed away, you know, you want to try and live as 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 a, a obedient child. But no matter how much you try, it doesn't work. you know it seems like it's working a little bit because they're not there anymore but if they were there it wouldn't work why you can see it in your children you can see it in the in your neighbors why because it's a sin of betrayal the sin of rebellion so if you have those sins remaining no matter how much you pray it's not going to work so i'm going to read verse three then he said to me son of man I am sending you to the sons of Israel. So who who is Israel? It's a rebellious people. Who are these rebellious people? Who have rebelled against me. So that's who he's sending you to. So to do this precious work where you go and and speak this mystery of Christ. But starting from me, because I'm rebellious, because I have this sin of rebellion. 
what have I done to my parents, our ancestors? You know what they would the, what they would say. You know, there's this poem that represents Korea, which is you need to serve your parents as much as you can while they're alive. Who doesn't want to? But our ancestors, what they wrote, this is all they could write to do your utmost in serving them. But it doesn't work. They don't have that. They say, you know, once they're gone, you'll just be filled with regret. No matter how much you want to serve your parents when they're alive, you can't. And once they're d- dead, you just feel you're, you're filled with regret. So what are you going to do? That's what our ancestors wrote about in in a poem. So they're saying serve them, but who doesn't want to serve them? You know, how much do we only have disobedient children and hardly any obedient children that the king would have to give an award? You know, is it because it's because it was so rare to find them? But even that person who received the reward, when did they, the award, you know, they were just double minded, they lied. When, when did they have forced their repentance to get rid of that sin of rebellion? So, this sin of betrayal. I have said with my own mouth, I'm someone who was so disobedient. So do you think I've repented or not? It's because I've repented that I can say this. So how much were you obedient to your parents? Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, you have to reap what you sow. So let's find Isaiah chapter 59. As long as you have this sin, no matter how much you pray, you're not going to do well. So what is it that you have to do? Now that they've passed away, they say, they're saying, you're going to be filled with regret your whole life. That's what our ancestors, that's the poem that they wrote. That's the last part of the poem. At the beginning, they say, serve your parents with, with, you know, as hard as with your utmost, but they're saying, Once they passed away, you'll be filled with regret your whole life. So all these learned people, Confucianism, Mentionism, everything that they've learned, this is all that they come up with, this poem. So where is there a way out? They're saying all you're going to do is be filled with regret your whole life, but there's no way to fix it. So was there anyone who was obedient or not? No. So they were all rebellious. So as time goes by, these children are so disobedient. So is it just me that was disobedient? You and I were the same. And that's why people are like, well, we're all the same. So, you know, that's, that's, you know, this is what it is. But God gives us a solution. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1 and 2. As long as you have these sins and you're praying, that's why you don't have answers. You pray for your children to do well. You pray for yourself to do well, but it doesn't work. If I, It's because I'm not doing well that I can't help others. If your children come to greet the parents and they come with their utmost care, you know, they, they come all clean and tidy, or they, they come all strangely, Which one do you prefer? You'll be like, inside you'll be like, ooh, that child is useless. You won't say, oh, they've come with the utmost care. God knows our thoughts and our actions. Psalms 139. What is it to receive the, 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 the rod? If you want to receive miraculous answers, you need to receive wisdom but it says you have to receive that rod and and the reproof proverbs chapter 29 verse 15 but which church hits you with the rod is your life of faith right so it's those with doctorates these idiots who who have a little bit of the lies that seem right at that time god says That's the worst of evil, what you study with your head. They're the biggest problems. What they've learnt with evil, they boast of their name, they act around so conceited. You think God's going to leave them? You know what God is? 
Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. What kind of God is God? He has jealousy. He gets rid of them all. But who gets rid of them? It's they who do that. You know, they learn all those things and they want to use it. In Korea, we, we talk about all, all the academics. You know, God, he's not just going to leave that. We have, we have to realize correctly. Why is it that we don't receive help? The sin of rebellion that your ancestors have passed down. How have you lived? What did you do to your parents? You have to repent. Let's read it together. Behold, Jehovah's hand is not so short that it cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his faith from you so that it does not hear. So it says it's because of sin that it cannot help you. So what sin? The sin of rebellion. Our parents, they passed it down. They didn't know themselves, but it's still sin. And we have that sin passed down to us. So no matter how much we try to be obedient, we can't. So in the world, so in Korea, that the poem, I can't remember what grade it was that I did that poem. But other than that poem, you know, what are the other poems? The, the exact poem is this one. It's saying you can't, you can't fix anything once they're passed. But they don't have a way of how you can serve your parents. Which Confucius, which, Confucius, which religion tells you how to serve your parents? So let's go to Ephesians. This is where we can serve our parents. So even if my parents have committed the sin of rebellion so that so that you can't be obedient, and even though they've passed down this sin of betrayal, those people who do force their repentance and then betray, you see what the parents and the children are like, their relationship. It's a complete mess. According, according to the word, it's the sin of rebellion where they have to be stoned to death. They're afraid that people will know. Those people who can't say men, the demons, you know, they can't say men because they know if they're talking about, I'm talking about their families. So in the world, there is no way. All they can say is all your life, you just be filled with regret. But the Lord will fix it. This is what we've come to receive. This is how we and our children can live, how Korea can live. So in the world, there is no way. But here, if I wasn't able to honor and be obedient to my parents, even though it, it may have passed, the sin is still there. So these sins that go down to three and four generations, because I was disobedient to my parents, it's gone down. That's why God can't help. But we've come to receive His help. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, let's read it. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Amen. So which which religion has the Lord? They don't have Christ. Which religion has Christ? It's in the Lord that you obey and you honor all those things. In the Lord. So the Lord is Christ. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. The Lord is Christ. Christ is the mystery of God. The mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ is forced at repentance. So it's when you do forced at repentance that you go in Christ. If you go in Christ, <clears throat> Christ changes to become the Lord who helps you. So it's when you're in the Lord, when you're a new person, that's when you honor your parents and that's when you don't have the sin of rebellion. So that's, that's when all the sins that you've committed have been forgiven and your children become obedient. Which religion in this world? These fake churches that talk about God even Buddhists talk about God. Even shamans talk about God. Just because you say God, that's not how it works. God is in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. So by the mystery of Christ, if you do force that repentance, then you become someone who is in the Lord. So if you repent of your sins and your ancestors' sins, Psalms chapter 32, verse 5 and 6, you meet the Lord. 
So it's when you honor your parents in the Lord, that's when you're an obedient child. If anything you haven't done like that, that's sin. That's why we have to repent of this. If I wasn't obedient to my ch- to my parents, it's because I wasn't in the Lord. And even if your parents have the sin of rebellion, no matter how filthy they are, if I'm in the Lord, I can be obedient. So don't grumble against your parents or anyone. If I do this mystery of God now and I go inside of the Lord and I receive the Lord's help, then you will become obedient. And so your children will become obedient. Is this amen? So he's given us this way. He's taught us this way. And then verse 2 and 3, it says you will receive blessings. I'll read verse 2 and 3. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. So where? In the Lord. So if you do this, verse 3, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. So you'll be happy and healthy and you'll receive the blessings of doing more well. And so a thousand generations will receive blessings. Your children will be obedient. If your children are giving you heartache, it's because of the sin of rebellion where where God says they have to be stoned to death. If you let that sin remain and you say, oh Lord, may my children do well in the exam, get a good job, get married well, to do more well and to go to heaven. Don't speak dog talk. Because of the sin of rebellion, it's not going to work. Because I've committed the sin of rebellion, I was disobedient to my parents. You know, whether your parents knew or not, it's come down to you. And I didn't know how to go in the Lord. I didn't know, forced at repentance, how to go in Christ. So I was committing those sins. That's why your children, they don't listen. And they have the diseases that your ancestors' demons bring. Why do we do forced at repentance? To be forgiven of sin. If we're forgiven of sin, your ancestors' sins can't stick. So those diseases of your ancestors don't come to you. This is the blessing that we and our children have to receive. We have to do more well. Is this amen? Let's call upon the Lord three times. Everyone has this sin of rebellion. Let's confess this and to go inside of the Lord. If I go inside of the Lord, then my children become obedient. Not just that, the diseases disappear. We've seen that grandmother's demon brought the disease of thyroid cancer, you know, bringing headaches. and. So how do those ancestors' demons stick? It's when you have sin. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. But if you do forced at repentance, those sins are forgiven. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. God forgives in Christ. So it's only inside, those inside of the Lord that receive forgiveness of sins. That's why you have to do forced at repentance, the mystery of Christ. So if you're forgiven of your sins, then the demons can't stick. And so you, your diseases disappear. What a good promise this is. So even doctors at hospitals, they should at least be able to cast out demons. That's when, you know, they can say, even, you know, if you're not forgiven of your sins, even if we do surgery, you're still, you know, that it's it's still going to come back. So you... So they should at least know this before doing surgery. You know, we talk about the 21st century. What's the point of 20, the 21st century if you just have this evil that you learn with your head, the demons? Let's live correctly. Our past where we weren't, where we weren't obedient to our parents. Let's confess this and go inside of the Lord. Then I fix my destiny and my children will completely change to be obedient. We will do more well. Our country will live. Our people will live. We'll be healthy. We'll only receive blessings. That is a blessed man. So it's only the Lord who helps us. So today, let's call upon the Lord three times and go inside of the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. Father God, it's because of this sin of rebellion that we've ruined ourselves and our children. Today, may we end this. May we receive forgiveness. May I do well and may my children be obedient. May we be a blessed family that is a patriot to our country.